We're here at Sun and Fun, and we had to come by the BD booth and look at some other constructions that we've seen, partly because of the construction, which we'll talk about, but also because we'd seen the 17, which is behind our camera here earlier, and we've done some video yes. on that. But now we're looking at a different airplane. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Jim Beatty here, who is going to inform all of us about what's going on. First, what is this, and how is it different than the 17 we looked at earlier? I can see a lot of difference, but go through some of the detail. Well, this is our BD-6. Again, it's a single place. It, uh, it will incorporate a 60-horse HKS engine, like we do with the 17. The 17, however, is a honeycomb design where you bond it together, kind of ah, like okay. the Grumman Yankee which was originally the BD-1. Okay, that, so, that whole process kind of scares some people. Yes. I, Bonding is, a, that's, a, that's an art form. And it only came back in maybe about seven or eight years ago when they came up with a two-part epoxy where you don't have to bake it any longer ah. to bond it. So that's what actually brought back the honeycomb construction for us. Um, this this, this uh, BD-6 is kind of like a, the little brother of the BD-4. It's a bolt-together construction um, using the gussets and the screws. Um, the wing itself is a wing that we've been using now for maybe nine, ten years with the honeycomb ribs bonded onto the spar and then the skin bonded onto that. That's what forms the leading edge here, is that correct? Yeah, actually, it does come form, but yes. And if we go around the back Supports side. Supports it, I maybe should have Correct, said. correct. Okay. And the fuel cells inside the wing, um, it, roughly this one will hold about 20 gallons. And you can open up more if you need to. Um, well, if you're using the HKS engine, that's quite a fuel right. miserly engine. And, so and we do love that engine. Is yes, uh, several hours of yes, operation. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, this looks like kind of a giant erector set to yes. me. I mean, I feel like I could put one together, and I'm not a real mechanical guy. So I mean, but this is you know screw A and the whole V and like that. It is. It um, it probably would take about 600 man hours completely okay. to assemble it. Um, we use an S-plied landing gear strut, we call it. We use it on the BD-4, and it's it's a composite uh, type of a strut that 3M made a long time ago. Now it's made by another company, but it works, there's no moving parts in the landing gear box, so it works like a spring, except if you land hard, it doesn't throw you back up. And they uh, use the a rebound problem. Exactly, yeah, maybe 50% uh -huh. of what you would think. Well, I'm looking at the airframe here, Jim, and I'm just kind of seeing, you know, I mean, I, I see what looks like a whole lot of individual parts, which then have a gusset plate that join them together and provides the strength and the triangulation. But it looks like, I mean, I can believe the 600 hours because there's always a number of pieces and parts, and you're talking to flying, right? Yes. So that would be all the dress up and the rest of the thing. The basic assembly of the airframe looks actually quite simple, though. Are they, for example, where the screw holes go in here, are those pre-drilled or do you drill them or how does that part Right work? now they are not pre-drilled. They are on the BD-4 for instance, but they're not on here. So you get a set of plans and the gussets now come pre-cut. But before you used to put the, 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 the paper on the, on the metal. So they're full-size the ones yes, then, okay. Exactly. All right, well and that's then, a lot easier too then. You don't have to calculate anything. You just have to sort of follow the instructions. Exactly. All the weldments come included with it. Um, we do that for you. The welding is done. No welding for the Correct. for the user or Correct. the buyer or the builder to do. Okay. And a lot of the parts are interchangeable with the four, some of the bell cranks, etc. Um, the tail comes to you pre-bonded. Okay. It's, again, it's a honeycomb ribs with the skin bonded on it. So the vertical and horizontal come ready. You have to put the trim tab on the rudder on, but for the most part, that's done. Um, the control surfaces are a mahogany wood with a skin bonded to it. Okay. Uh, okay. And again. The wing can come off in two, three minutes. It's two bolts. Ah, is that right? Undo okay. the fuel line and it, in the electrical connection for the lights. Now I'm going to walk in right front of the camera here because I want to point out this uh, this great big old spar in the center. This is what's doing the main load carrying the wing. I can I can see Correct. obviously. And I gather then based on what you just said, Jim, about the wing is that they must just fit in there to that component. Kind of That's like a the center effect. section. Yes, okay. exactly. That, the, the spar actually slides over the center section. Slides over, okay. And this particular one here is the same as we use on the 17, and we took the 17 to 11 Gs, and we got a quarter inch deflection. Wow. The tubular spar for us has been our trademark since day one. What category are you aiming at? What kind of aircraft will it be when it's completed? Well, this will be in the LSA category for this okay. airplane. Um, what kind of weights are you projecting for a completed one? I'm going to project somewhere around 620 pounds. Okay. Um, that varies obviously when the oh, building paint, etc. But no, that's where, and we'll have a gross weight of somewhere around 950 to 1,000 pounds. Okay, so a big guy, I mean, it looks like a big seat in it, so a big guy could get in Actually, this. Paul Poverizny flew this one originally, and he loved it. He wrote an article about it, but he was a big guy. Yeah, he was. Okay, so he was comfortable in it. 
Uh, let's talk about the history of it a little bit because you said this is not some newly hatched program. Here. No, you're right. It came out, uh, I want to say in 1973. And uh, it came out and it was developed then. And for some reason, they got busy with other projects and it got shelved. And we had the prototype for a long, long time. And I actually gave it to the University of uh, Kent State University to do some engineering on it for the students. And they took it all apart and never put it back together. <laughs> and actually, Those students. one of our engineers doing? here, Tim, Tim Becker, he loved this darn thing. And he kept nagging me and nagging me and nagging me. I said, fine, he started finishing up in his garage. Well, like I said, we now have seven of them under construction. We actually sold one here at the show. Is that right? The Great. guy's going to come to our build center to build one. Um, and maybe it is the bolt together construction that makes people feel very comfortable with assembling it, where there's no welding or anything like that. I don't know, but it's turned out to be one of our best sellers. Well, right I can now. kind of believe it. It just looks very approachable from a construction standpoint. Now, over my shoulder, we'll just take a glance at it. It's not really the kind of thing we normally cover, but I'm looking back here at similar construction on your four seat aircraft. Correct. Now, this is the BD 6C, I think you no, said. No, BD 4C. 4C, for yes. Charlie, okay. But it, it looks essentially the same as this one in the sense of the, the parts are different shape and longer and bigger or whatever, but it looks like it goes together about the same way. Yes, it does. So how many different kits is the BD company putting out these days, Jim? Well, we have we have the kit for the BD-4, we have now the kit for the BD-17, and now the kit for the BD-6 okay. right now. And, uh, and, um, the, and the 17, uh, that's another one that meets the uh, LSA parameters. Yes, it does. But it's an experimental amateur build, so it's not a light sport aircraft. It's a it's an experimental amateur build, is it not? Correct. Yeah, and then you could fly it with a sport pilot certificate. Correct. And that will be true with the BD-4, uh, 6 behind us here. Yes. Getting lost in your numbers here. Yeah, too many numbers. But it's all great. Um, how many BDs are flying around the world today? Well, oh, it, I sprung this on you, so just yeah, give me a it's, ballpark. It's funny. I would say on the BD-4s, we probably have somewhere around 900 flying. Wow. And actually, the BD-4 was the first airplane, a lot in Australia, was the first airplane right? certified in Australia. And we love dealing with those people. but. They're, they're on their, coming close to their 40th year wow. on the fiberglass wing panel, so a lot of them are buying the new wing. Ah, okay. Okay, but they use them out there like crazy. Um, but yeah, we'd guess our closest guess is somewhere in that figure of those flying. We now have seven uh, BD-6s under construction. We have 11 BD-17 sold and one, two, three, four flying other than ours. Is that right? Yes. Well, cool, all right. So you're getting a nice population of airplanes out there. Uh, a lot of information here. I'm, I'm excited to see this one take shape and we'll look for it when it's all completed and flying at an air show near you somewhere. Yeah, we hope to have this one done by Oshkosh. Okay, That's great. our goal. Well, we'll come and look again yeah. then at Oshkosh. Meanwhile, to get more about the BD company, give us your website. We'll put it up on the screen for people. But how do they call you and go, I got to have more or I just want to buy? Well, they can go to jimbd.com. And also on there, it has a history. You can see the BD-10 and a bunch of other stuff. All right, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of rich history in the BD-10. And, and name, the five so. going through the bar for the James Bond movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. You got that under yeah. as well. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's very great. Uh, we're here at Sun and Fun. I've been talking with Jim Beatty. I'm Dan Johnson. You can find more about the BD aircraft and lots more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for coming along here and visiting with Jim and myself at Sun and Fun.